Hello, everyone. It's great to be with you on this fourth Sunday of Easter, and perhaps you're watching this a little bit later. Uh, but this is a particular special, uh, memorable Sunday that happens every year in the liturgical year, that is. Um, and it has to do everything with sheep and their shepherd. And so I want to welcome you and uh, pray God's blessings as you uh, are like me and are continuing to sort out uh, the realities of the future, the realities of the present, and also remembering the realities of the past. And so we bring those all together uh, and, and begin to dwell upon that uh, and, and turn our attention to the as we gather portion of our service. Describing Jesus as a shepherd is a special image. It's a thought provoking image. The believer receives a sense of assurance in knowing that the one being followed throughout his life uh, it, or throughout life is Jesus, the good shepherd. The fact that our Lord chooses to repeat the words, I am the good shepherd, more than once indicates its importance to him and to us. As we follow Jesus, as sheep follow their shepherd, uh, we can be confident that he will lead us into that place where goodness and righteousness are given to us by grace. And so we sing our opening hymn, the Lord's my shepherd, I, I'll not want. baptism, we continue our journey of faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Let us come before God in true repentance, 
seeking forgiveness and amendment of our lives as we follow the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Almighty God, we confess that we are indeed sinful. We have done the evil you forbid, and have not done the good you demand. We do repent, and are truly sorry for these our sins. Have mercy on us because of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Grant that by the working of the Holy Spirit, we may follow where he leads until the t that time when we, by his grace, come to dwell in your house forever. God has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him for grace. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next hymn is a mercy hymn, or a, it's the Kyrie, and it's just one verse and we sing it now. Merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes to us from the the sequel to Luke, the book of Acts, chapter two, the, chapter 2, the life of the first Christians. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and, the, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all these believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as had any had need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor for all the people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our psalm, psalm number 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now from 1 Peter chapter 2, the example of Christ who suffered for us. For it brings favor if, 
because of a consciousness of God, someone endures grief from suffering unjustly. For what credit is there if when you do wrong and are beaten, you endure it? But when you do what is good and suffer, if you endure it, this brings favor with God. For you were called to this, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you as an example that you should follow in his steps. He did not commit sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he did not insult in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray. But you have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our final reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Jesus is the gate of the sheep. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Truly, I tell you, anyone who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all his own outside, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. Instead, they run away from him because they don't know the voice of strangers. Jesus gave them this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Jesus said again, Truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we sing our next hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
Grace and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I, uh, I requested a lamb, and when I requested that lamb, I pictured that lamb being much smaller. <laughs> and uh, this is the first time I've held this lamb that uh, someone has graciously allowed me to, to use for this time together. And uh, I've wanted to do this for years. And so this is going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting. You see, that metaphor of a shepherd and a sheep is one that Jesus uses. It's one that the scriptures use ultimately. It's one that God uses more than once. And so today, we're given the Gospel of John chapter 10, where Jesus is talking to his disciples, and this time he's saying, I am the gate, okay? And he, he alludes to, you know, himself, he speaks of himself as, as being the shepherd, but it's almost like the disciples didn't quite get it. it. And so he's like, okay, you're not getting it, guys. So then the next paragraph is, I am the gate, literally. I'm the door, okay? And, and you know as well as I do, and maybe some of you don't know this, but we love the imagery of, of sheep, and uh, <laughs> we love it uh, because we like to pick on sheep, uh, because sheep seem to be kind of uh, off sometimes. But if you are a, a sheep farmer or a shepherd, it, it's quite different. I, I think you know the beauty of these buggers. And uh, we have to know that back in the day when, when farming or sheep herding, uh, grazing was a, a common thing, it was before fences. And so how you kept the sheep together was not with fence, it was with a shepherd. Now, sheep are dangerous in the sense that if you leave them in a pasture too long, they will kill the pasture. They'll eat the, the grass down to the roots and it's gone. And then the weeds come in and it's, it's no good anymore. The other thing is that sheep can be kind of dumb. Uh, they, they, they can be the simplest things. And, and I'm, I'm talking like I know all about sheep. I know what I've read. I've been around them a fair amount. I'm not afraid to pick one up. Um, but aside from that, I'm not a, you know, a, 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 a farmer or a shepherd who knows sheep very well. But I do know that they, they can be misunderstood. Because one thing that sheep have that is incredible is those things coming off the head those ears and those ears can hear the voice of their shepherd so picture a number of shepherds with their flock you know out at night and it comes time it's been a long day it's time for dinner it's time to to lay down get some sleep this lamb's kind of getting heavy by the way we'll see how long i can do this but he's He's going with my cue. He's listening to me. He keeps looking at my mouth, right? Because he's listening. Well, probably not. He's probably wondering when I'm going to put him back or take him back to where he knows the, the cells and everything else. But anyway, a shepherd and the flock get together, uh, or, or they're together till the end of the day, and then it's time to put them down. And, and in these pastures or in these lands where there's a lot of pasture, there are common places. Think of like rest stops. And, and over time, people had built, um, they had built fence or like little house foundations. Uh, you kind of picture a house without a roof is how I see it. And so there's an entrance, but there's mostly a wall. So you might say it is a fence, but this is where multiple shepherds and, and sheep would probably gather for the night and they kind of keep watch together. They, they work together. And then, um, you know, when it comes morning, what does the shepherd have to do? He says, see you guys. And he says, you know, his word to, to get his sheep's attention. And guess who, what sheep follow him? The ones with the ears and the brain that knows who their shepherd is. And they're very easy to separate. Unlike trying to separate, you know, cattle today and, and, and sheep for that matter, it's a little more complicated. They're not used to doing that. Well, here we go. I was waiting for this. Okay. So... <laughs> That's what we need to know about sheep, is that they have ears and they, they listen to the voice of their shepherd. That's what make them, makes them remarkable amidst their, their other qualities. Now, 
I want you to hear about the shepherd, because that's what we need to know about. The shepherd is the one who takes care of the sheep. And the shepherd is often compared to the hired hand or the, uh, you know, the hired hand uh, or, or the robber. Uh, they both are more prone to, to skedaddle, to leave when there's controversy. But, but Jesus in his parable talks about the thieves and the robbers who don't come through the doorway. And the doorway is where the, where, you know, the, the, the shepherd that's on night duty is sitting. And the thieves and the robbers, they come in the wrong way. And they steal sheep. So what does that mean for us today? Most of us don't have sheep. Uh, so this is kind of pointless if all we think of this is, is just about sheep. It's not about sheep. Jesus is the shepherd who speaks. And we're like sheep in that we have ears. But we also live in a world that has enemies. A world that has robbers. And, and we're not talking about robbers who maybe break into your home. We're talking about the ideas and the voices that cause fear and frustration. And if there has been any fear and frustration and confusion and conflict in the last few weeks, um, in other words, there's been a lot of that based, to this, based on this pandemic. Every day goes by and I, I think I know what I'm gonna be doing in a week or maybe in a month and then it just keeps changing. It's really complicated. And it's not as novel as it once was six weeks ago. It's getting more frustrating. And for some people, it's never been novel. It came out of nowhere, and it took loved ones uh, already uh, by means of the deathliness of the pandemic. And so there's that reality, but there's also people that are not as connected to it. And, and so maybe the economy is struggling, uh, and that's causing the tension. Now, we know that the economy isn't the, the sole thing uh, on this earth. But we also know that it's really beneficial when it's going well. But when things aren't going well with the economy, things aren't going well in other places too. And so I'm not here to say, here's how we fix the economy. I'm not here to say, here's how we fix the, the pandemic. But what I am here to tell you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're watching this, is that we have a God in Jesus Christ, who is the good shepherd. And he speaks to us through his word. And those words, yeah, they can convict us. They can uh, tell us that uh, we aren't doing everything right. But ultimately, those words of the cross, those words of Easter, are words that give comfort and strength and ultimately life. Life amidst the death that we are surrounded by. And there is more death than we know right now uh, as we look around and as we follow the statistics and so on and so forth. Dear friends in Christ, Jesus Christ is our good shepherd. And we, not be, may, we may not be physically held in his arms like I'm holding this baby sheep. Not quite a baby anymore. But he does hold us in his hands or with his arms, providing for us, taking care of us. And so we have the things that we have been given, but more than anything, we have life, we have faith, and we have the forgiveness of sins in his name. And that's never being taken away from us. No matter what pandemic or frustration or economical collapse may happen, Jesus, our good shepherd, is always there speaking this truth into our ears, whether it's coming through YouTube or in person, wherever we're going to hear about it, reading in portals of prayer, you name it. God speaks. He speaks words of comfort and strength. He is the gate. That's all we need to know. He's, he's, got, uh, he's got us surrounded, and he's at the gate watching out for us. And we are able to listen and trust and be blessed by the blessings that he has given to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, I gotta put this guy back, back in the container now. That might be a little noisy. Well, there you go. So we're gonna sing our next hymn.
us pray. I'm sorry, uh, we, we, we remember our, our offering uh, time when we're not able to, to give this offering together. We thank you for the many gifts that have been uh, given to Trinity in this time of separation. Uh, we continue to, to seek and receive those gifts to be used for the continuing of the ministry here. You please uh, send those by, um, by mail. Uh, put them in an envelope. Put your offering envelope in an envelope and, and send it in. And, and when you write a check, make sure you write Trinity Lutheran Church because we do have Trinity Learning Center as well, both with the same abbreviations, TLC. So Trinity Lutheran Church. That being said, let us pray. For the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole church that through it the goodness of God be shared and the good news of salvation in very different ways uh, from our homes, phones, computers, and essential workplaces. We pray uh, this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, assured of the shepherd's care for all of his sheep, Help us in the midst of the confusion, frustration, and sadness associated with COVID-19 pandemic as we are led by our good shepherd day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world amidst a global pandemic, asking that still waters of peace flow around the globe and that there be goodness and kindness among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for our families and everyone in them. Together help us to follow the Good Shepherd as one flock in which all dwell together in love and unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose tables are set in difficult and challenging places, for those lives uh, whose lives know conflict, uh, sadness, continuing in illness, uh, to name a few. Uh, gently guide them with your comforting voice and words, Good Shepherd, and keep them ever with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With gratefulness, we remember those who already dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Inspire us to pass throughout our earthly journeys with faith and hope as we heed the voice of our Good Shepherd and follow in his ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us now as you've taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. And we sing our final hymn, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, please.
Thank you, uh, Lila, for playing again, and uh, our weekly offering uh, accountant or accounting for last week's offering. You can see there. Praise God for that, and uh, some memorial donations in memory of Jim Peterson uh, noted here. Also, we continue to keep Patty, Roger, as well as Lou Drevlo in our prayers uh, this week uh, as there's recovery uh, going on uh, for each of those. So we keep those three in our prayers. Uh, the announcements really haven't changed. There's a call for uh, making homemade masks. Uh, so you can read about that here. You can call the number if you have any questions that you'd, you'd like to help out. Um, Offering a note there about TLC, we shouldn't use that anymore. Public service, worship services uh, will continue at 9 a.m. on YouTube. Uh, the elders and I have been talking about what may happen, and uh, we're trying to be uh, cautious, uh, but also have a plan in store when, when the, the opening up uh, happens. Uh, but but we, I think caution is the one word I can use uh, that, that best uh, speaks of how the elders have, have walked through this already to this point. So we'll continue to discuss that. Um, stewardship, automatic giving, the playground project, uh, you probably got a letter in the mail regarding that, and so you can read uh, about that there. Um, and I think that picture is here somewhere. Yeah, that's the, the existing playground in addition to what uh, would be added. And so I, I leave you with that. But I also leave you with the tremendous metaphor of Jesus being our shepherd. Jesus calling himself a gate. He is the means by which we enter eternal life. Uh, he's the means by which that eternal life is given to us already. So it's not just uh, come death. That eternal life is ours now, that we are able to live uh, with those promises, with that assurance. And so uh, he gives to that, gives us that this day amidst the, all the things going on outside. And so uh, the Lord be with you this week as you continue to uh, uh, probably get a little frustrated, uh, but also do the right thing. Be smart, be wise, but also have a caring heart, uh, an open heart to all. Uh, to turn others and help others see the, the caring and loving heart of Jesus through your actions, through your words, and through your deeds. That's all for now. Again, have a great week.